for his thinking. He had started his new, he had been run this newspaper, which Mr. Wells had started, known as the Grenier Chronicle. The government shut it down. So while during the trial they shut it down, he said, You haven't heard from me yet. He started another newspaper, he called it the Grenada People. He was arrested for having the newspaper. And the British government burnt the newspaper down. When he was freed, he started another newspaper. He called it the Federalist. No, he called it the Guardian, sorry. And the Guardian had the same fate. So Donovan left to Trinity, went to Trinidad, and got into the newspaper business in Trinidad. And he started the same thing there. He, they called him the troublemaker. So he was deported from Trinidad. And he returned to Grenada about 1904. And he started another newspaper called The Federalist. When he started this new newspaper, there was this young boy in the town of St. George's going to school. He induced him to come to the newspaper on afternoons. He said, come over here and learn one or two things from me. And that youngster was a man who eventually became very famous as Theophil, Theophilus Albert Marshall, T. Marshall. And Marshall became a very good student of Donovan. Donovan was getting old. He continued to clamor for a British West Indies Federation. He's known as the grandfather of the British West Indian Federation movement. But he's also saying we should be independent when we get this federation. And he was arrested and thrown in jail and all of that type of thing. And he got this youngster to come in. And before he died, before he died, he induced the youngster, Marishu, to start his own newspaper. And Donovan assisted him to set up his newspaper, a newspaper known as the West Indian, January the 1st, 1915. And he gave them a slogan. He told them, the slogan has to be, the West Indies must be West Indian. And Marshall took up the torch. And in the 1920s and 30s, his voice was heard throughout the United States and the United Kingdom and Europe. The only voice preaching for a West Indian Federation. He was never imprisoned as Donovan was because times had changed. But he and a few other politicians showed the West Indians, West Indies, forced the British government to begin to examine themselves. And so for the first time throughout the West Indies in 1925, they set up a parliament. They call it the Legislative Council throughout every island in the West Indies. The work of Marshall and his colleagues like Buster Manti of Jamaica and Webb of Guyana and people like that, they forced the British to consider now having some type of parliament. The island of Barbados had one because the British were always there and they felt the Barbadians were superior so they had their own thing. But all the other islands, Trinidad, Grenada, they were just being trampled on. So they had this, they set up this parliament. But they made sure that the elected members had very little voice. So Marisho continued, not only for a West Indies Federation, but for representative government through the Caribbean. And so in 1938, the British government set up a major, major commission on the man known as Mr. Moyne, Major Moyne. 
he became uh, he was knighted and became Lord Halifax. Major Moyne, when he came to the Caribbean and he saw what Marshall was talking about, he made certain drastic recommendations. He said the whole parliamentary system must change. Now, up until that time, to vote in elections, one, you must have a certain salary. If you're not making enough money, you couldn't vote. Or you must own a certain amount of property. So in other words, the electoral list was very small. It was so bad that the principals of schools couldn't vote because they were not making enough money to vote. A sergeant in the police force couldn't vote because he wasn't making enough money to vote. You know? And you have big civil servants, they have big names, but they couldn't vote big salaries did not allow. Mr. Moyne said that that should be removed. There should be nothing as property qualification. He recommended that the commission was set up in 1938. It is famously known as the Moyne Commission. He also said, once you remove the property qualifications, all persons throughout the Caribbean, once they attain the age of 21 years, they should become eligible to vote unless they have a criminal record. He recommended that. Well, World War II came out just about the time that he made his recommendation. So there was a delay until 1941. Based on Marshall, the people of Guyana were given what is called universal adult franchise. All Guyanese 21 years and older became eligible to vote at elections. That was given to the people of Jamaica in 1944. Then it was given to the people of Trinidad and Tobago in 1947. And in 1947, the British government announced that as of April the 1st, 1950, Everybody in the West Indies wants to become 21 years and older, you will be eligible to vote at elections. That is the work of T. Albert Marshall. And that paved the way now to independence. Because once people are able to vote, the whole electoral and administrative process changed. It opened the way for West Indians to be in positions that they couldn't touch before. West Indians became judges. They became chiefs of police. Things they couldn't touch before. Because the whole legislative process was changed. Teachers were changed. Not only that, the Mine Commission had also recommended that you must have more secondary schools. When you want to have education for the people, then the elections for the people, you have to raise the educational standards. So we need more high schools, we need this. He recommended we must have a university in the West Indies. All because one fellow by the name of T. Albert Marshall carried on the work that Galway Donovan had asked him to do. And so when we talk about West Indies being independent, you cannot rule out two people, Galway Donovan and T. Marish. Eventually, of course, as people got the opportunity to vote, other politicians came on the scene. Just about the time the Mine Commission came, a young man known as R. O. Williams in Grenada. He was very young. He started to say, hey, we want independence too. We want independence. But he says, what we have to do, all the vacant land that belonged to the estate must be, must be taken away by the government 
and set up what is called land settlement. In time to keep him quiet, the British were very clever at that, they promoted him. They made him a member of the executive council, so this way he couldn't go around making all that type of noise that he was making before. Then, in 1951, well, actually, in 1950, a young Grenadian and a, a few of his friends, they were deported from the island of Aruba for getting involved with the trade union movement. In those days, it was illegal to have trade union movements in Aruba and in Curacao. And these Grenadians went there, starting up trade union movements. They were charged of being communists, and, ex and deported and among them was a fellow called Eric Matthew Geary so he became a member of the parliament but a parliament which was made possible as a result of T.A. Marishal there could be no Geary even if he had come there there could be no Geary there could be no anybody else after that having the influence and power and what have you to talk about anything if Marichaud did not create the atmosphere for it to happen. Now Marichaud himself died in 1958. Incidentally, I should tell you, if we did have a federation in 58 and he died shortly thereafter, there was a British federation, but it collapsed because it was not properly set up. So it, it couldn't last. But he did see a federation put in place before he died and of course the young fellows who took over the thing messed it up they they started to quarrel about leadership who should be in charge and that type of thing so the thing failed and he died unfortunately we caribbean people and grenadians are particularly bad at that we are very slow or very poor at recording the contributions of our people and therefore Marshall has been falling a victim to our indifference to the contributions and sacrifice that people have made we eventually became independent but when we became independent the British wanted to get rid of us at that time it's because at the time the government we had in power, unfortunately led by Eric Gary, become, became such a nuisance that the British wanted to just get it. So when he asked, they, let's get, they were glad to tell him to ticket and go with it. So we got it under not the best conditions. The result was his behavior led up to a revolution by a young fellow called Morris Bishop. And if you read the speeches of Morris Bishop, and perhaps perhaps he is the politician who has made the most recorded speeches, you will see at least 30% of his speeches, and he was one of the best speakers we have ever heard. Marshall's name had a way of turning up, turning up. He was indicating to Grenadians the influence Marshall had on him, even though in many instances he was embodied. He was also showing the influence Marshall had on events in Grenada long after he had died. As a matter of fact, after World War II, the British had been accused of being ruthless, so they decided to meet with what was then called the League of Nations. Before the United Nations, we had something before that called the League of Nations to show that they are they are good servants and they treat people nicely and so on and they tried to get Marishu to go up to, to England that, well it wasn't to England it was somewhere in Europe I think it was in Geneva to go there and say what good the British have been doing us how they've been treating us nicely and feeding us well and that type of thing and he refused to go and they were able to convince a politician in Barbados known as Grantley Adams to do that for them. That tells us the character of uh, Marshall. Now, there's something, a lot of things about Marshall that are very interesting. 
the first housing scheme 